What's up guys and gals? Today we're going to show you how to break down, service, and reassemble a Pen Fierce 3 uh, 4000 Live Liner with some tips and tricks along the way. We're going to get started by just taking the handle off. And then we're going to remove that spool and work on that. There are a few pieces I'll leave on here, uh, which will be the clicker and can't take that off so just a clicker but I will remove the drag so we can service them and the way to do that is to take that retaining spring out by sticking your screwdriver in and up keeping your finger over it so it doesn't go shooting somewhere now you can pop these out and that's what it looks like now to get the rotor off so we can work on the bail and the bail spring we're gonna remove these four screws plus this one and this one you're probably better off leaving this in the up position when you're doing this. It puts less stress on the reel. They just come off like that. And just in case, keep your finger over like this. Just kind of pressing it down a little bit. Under these screws, you're gonna find uh, a little washer. I think you've heard me say this many times before. If it's there, great, keep it. If it's not, don't worry that much about it. I don't think it makes much of a difference. All these screws will be the same size. And we're just going to pop this up. And just put it straight up. You'll find a lot of pieces on this side. We'll jump to that in a sec. But I'm going to leave that intact for now. I want to undo that screw there. Now you can flip this up and pull out. That's what it looks like. Pull the shaft out and now we can get to the rotor. Uh, before we get there, let's go ahead and pull this main gear out since it might fall out while we're working on the top part. And that uh, block and the crosswind gear. Now we'll undo that screw at the top, and then also, this is the bearing that came out from there. The screw in the top, and also that nut. Keep the, the screws or screws and nuts in separate positions so you don't lose track of where they came from. comes up and now we can just rock and pull that up to get this off. Okay for the rotor we're gonna take a few screws off. We'll start with this side. The corresponding screw at this level on the other side is the same so you don't need to worry about that. You pull this out, turn that sideways and you can just pull it off. Same screw on this other side here to get that bail arm off. I'm gonna kinda just hold my finger over this. Kinda like this. If it shoots up on you, don't worry about it too much. The bail spring will not go uh, shooting across the room, or should not go shooting across the room. Let's never say never. Gently lift this up to release the load off the bail spring. There you have that. You can remove the cover by taking the screw off. pop that up so you can see what's under there. You have the spring with that pivot, the trip arm, and that's all you have for that. For the line roller, we're gonna remove this screw right here. And I'll show you what the breakdown is. You have that screw, the bail arm, a washer or collar on the, under there with uh, the Teflon or plastic washer. 
the line roller, which one side is a little bit thicker than the other. This side over here is a thicker side, it looks like. And that will be facing the bail wire, so looking like that. Then you have the bushing and another washer underneath there. You can take this washer out of the rotor just so it's separate. I'm gonna jump to this side, which is probably the most intricate part of the reel. So with that in the, the rear drag. Uh, for this, we're just gonna pull up. So I'm gonna release some pressure off of it by moving this up like that, if you can see that. And then just kind of pushing from the bottom and pulling from the top. And off that comes. Notice the setup there where the hook is going up and under through it or under it. Then you can pull this straight up, just like that. Okay, so for this side, we're just gonna remove these two screws first. This was more of a guide for that spring above there. And this plate is just more of a cover to protect everything underneath there. I'm keeping my finger over it because uh, I kind of want to keep things intact so you can see it. Uh, that spring is already sprung, so you can't really see that part. But we'll take that up like that. And like I said, that spring is already sprung, so we can't show you that part. I'm going to pick this up gently so I can release the load off that spring. Then we're going to do that screw right there. Then you have this piece, if I can get it, lay it out like that. This goes on top of it with that arm sticking up, and then you have this spring on the bottom. All right, now we can do the pinion stack. Notice that the top of this pinion stack, there's a, a washer there. And there's also a bushing, I think, inside of that, inside of the pinion gear. Just remove those three screws so I can get that bearing cover off pop that out. There's a washer on top and here's how the stack looks. You have a washer on the bottom, you have the bearing, the anti-reverse clutch, a cup with a bearing inside of it. Notice they're just kind of different setup, I think the sides are different. And then a washer on top with the cover going over it. For this portion you simply pull up to get it out, looking like that. And it's not that tricky, but we're gonna try to take it apart so you can see everything involved. And I didn't do a good job of that. So, I'll take it out and then I'll show you afterwards what it is. I wanna make sure there's not another piece in here. I don't think there was. So to take this part out, we're gonna open our, our tweezers like this to get into those two slots. And then we'll turn it one way or the other. Once it starts loosening up, you can stick your thumb in there and just, I went the wrong way. Once it starts loosening up, you can stick your thumb in there and just turn it to get it the rest of the way up. Then you have a drag washer that goes above this piece. This washer kind of goes over everything right here. The last one is for because I don't really know. That goes over everything here. Not inside there, just more on top of like that. So I'll leave that separate. I will leave this intact, but if you want to take it off, you simply gotta open up the spring from one side and that pin will come out. That helps make the clicking sound when you turn this knob. Keep that out in a sec. Metal washer goes over the drag washer. Then you have this that goes inside there for the clicking sound for up here. Let's just pull this out and get the rest of the pieces off to make it a little easier for you. Another washer on top of this. And then this piece. Now you are going to note that this washer and that metal piece at the top there will be above here like that. Then you have a Templar washer that goes on top of the ratchet. And of course I'll show you all this stuff when we put it back together. Uh, there's one more thing I want to show you on this, which was the main gear. Let's take this off since we don't want that on there. 
we can pull this bearing off and then under there you'll have some washers some shims but to this is the part that engages and disengages the uh, the live liner feature to get to access that or to set this up we're gonna pop that e-clip off and under there is gonna be a spring this is I mean this is, can be kind of tricky but it's I don't think it is pop that off like that and then on this uh, that piece right there you'll see that there's a spring that's hooked into it try to get up so you can see it hooked into that little hole right there and the other piece is hooked into the into the main gear there's another hole right there that's it and the main thing about this one is that when you put this in you want to make sure the long hole goes into the main gear and you want that spring recessed inside that channel that you'll see when you look at yours that's it get this cleaned up and come back to you guys sure to put it all back together my apologies all right so what i did not tell you is how i'm going to go about cleaning this stuff uh so for the the drag washers these the ht100s put that there i'm going to use something like brake cleaner fluid to break those down uh, clean those off uh, i will use something like uh, maybe paper towel after a, a little bit of a soaking and just kind of wipe them off or i can just run the brake cleaner fluid over it and then when it comes or starts to become clear that's when i know it's pretty much clean and uh, then just set aside and let it dry for this you see me use a paper towel for my hands i use this for inside the reel as well i use a lot of q-tips just wiping things out uh, for the bearings i don't do much unless they need to be refurbished and if they do i have a video in my library that you can check on how to do that um, I use a toothbrush a lot and I think that's probably about it if I need to break any kind of dry grease or something down I'll use corrosion X and yeah that's about it all right so I'll see you guys in a bit welcome back first thing we we'll start with the spool we're gonna add some oil to certain places I use the relax oil put some there kind of work that in to make sure it's good I'm going to add some grease and I use pan grease to right there kind of want to block that from getting uh, salt water eating away at it it helps a little bit got to fill in all the gaps can add a little bit right there in that, that channel that's on the bottom of the spool that's where the shaft will sit and now we're going to do the drag washers and for that I'm going to use Cal's drag grease put a light amount on both of them or just both of these put on both sides and now all we're going to do is stick those in and then seal them up first one goes in obviously you see it's keyed it has the two little points those two little points go into those two there and it falls into the other two drop one of these washers in and then the second set you can lock it up now the way you do that is you take this spring angle it kind of down find the slot it's supposed to be in hold it in place and then just rotate with your fingers it usually works <laughs> sometimes you may have an issue once you get it in there you want to make sure that's in that slot or channel it should be in or all in there so we're going to raise it up move it down as need be to make sure that it is and this one is uh, for the bottom part if you wanted to add grease along there you could do that as well I'm not going to do it. Now let's go ahead and do the line roller assembly first. We're going to take some grease, add it inside there, just like that. In the section you see me using grease here, you can certainly use oil. Uh, I'm in salt water predominant neighborhoods. If that makes any sense. So I use grease, and grease works a lot better than oil does. Take one of these washers, 
stick that on there. Make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. And just for argument's sake, I'm going to add grease inside that line roller as well. And as I said before, don't forget that that thicker part will be facing the bail wire. So it'll be looking like that. First, I'm going to stick the bushing on. Stick the line roller on. And now we can take this collar, add some grease to it all around and then stick this washer on top of it looking just like that we can set it inside and it should just stay now we can add some grease inside here since I have this in my hand I'm going to add some grease around that point inside that channel and some over that hole right there where the pivot arm will be going through a little bit on the back side as well doesn't hurt and if you wanted to you could also add a little bit of grease to the tip right there now all I'm gonna do is take this put it over it and then screw this in I'm not gonna go all the way down but I will go to all the way to the bottom but then I'm gonna back it up slightly just so there's a little bit of play in it just in case I need that room for something when I get to here now we can do the line roller assembly I'm sorry the uh, bail spring assembly I will need these pieces here. I don't grease the bearing. Uh, sorry, I don't grease the spring, but I do grease this. And there's certain points on the rotor that I'll grease as well. So I think I'll just shut up and then you can just follow along. Got to be honest, honest with you, it was hard being quiet there. I wanted to talk. All right, so let's stick this in. I'm going to drop our, our trip arm in there. And the way that's going to sit is the long end of it will be facing down. Looking like that. Then we're going to take that, move that all the way to the top drop this in looking like that. I'm going to cover this up secure it with the screw but I'm not going to go all the way down. I want to have a little bit of room in here just in case I need it. Now we can take this hole right here put it over that piece right there and gently push down at an angle as you rock when you get to the bottom I'll have it over the post you can rotate it to make sure that it works properly and I'll show you a way to confirm that after I'm done putting this together snug it down make sure it still works you can pull that under or turn it over and see that that trip arm goes up and down for this side we're simply going to take this sideways put it on there rotate it down let's add some grease to this point because I didn't do that some inside the hole and then secure it with the screw. Don't forget to go ahead and lock the line roller down. And this piece as well. Make sure it works, which I see that it does. Check the bail flip. Looks good. While we're here we can go ahead and add some grease to right there at the top. Some over the hole where the screw is going to go, and some on the bottom. 
than in the channel. Now I've cleaned all these bearings including the anti-reverse clutch or bearing so we're going to add oil to all of them. For the anti-reverse clutch we're going to add about four or five drops. You see me rotating it just to kind of get on the cylinders instead of getting it just all in one spot. Then take the inner race, drop that in, and rotate this to get that oil spread around. You know you did it right when you pull this on, there's a very slight sheen from the oil on there. Plus, it works. <laughs> That's always the best test. Now we'll work these in as well. I'm going to show you one, just put it on my thing my jiggy here and then I'm going to run that to get the oil to kind of drop in and work around the balls inside. Now I'll go ahead and do the pinion stack first. I'm going to grease this bearing, I'm sorry, this uh, gear up. I like to grease the entire surface area of it so you'll see me just grease the entire thing. Uh, but you're just putting a light coat on there. This one's a bit much but it'll spread out or ooze out as it's being used for the most part. Also grease those threads at the, threads at the top there. Get this cup greased up as well. And now we can put the stack together. And the first thing that's going to go on will be that uh, bottom washer there, then this smaller bearing. Then we'll take the anti reverse clutch, stick that on there, rotate until it falls in place because it's keyed. And now we can take this, put that inside the cup, drop that over it, and now you can have this on top looking just like that. Now I'm going to pinch this together and grease the outside of this just for an extra layer of protection. And that should work. While we're here we can obviously stick this bushing in. So the whole setup looks just like that. Now we can go ahead and add a generous amount inside here. That looks good. I get paranoid with this, I really do, because getting it frozen in there is just sometimes just a tough process getting it out. Uh, I've never had one I couldn't get out, but sometimes bearings get damaged and they have to be replaced when you can just avoid that by doing this, this step right here. All right, so now I'm gonna take this and drop this in. We're gonna rotate it until it falls in place, just like that. Now we're gonna cover it up. This goes on anywhere. I'm gonna add a little bit of grease to it as well. Just my fingers. And then we're just gonna go ahead and secure it with the screws. Get them all in first and then snug, snug them all down. Now we take a little bit of grease to add to this ramp right here. Drop this over it, turn it as a, rotate it so it fits because this is keyed. Now you can put this washer on. Secure it with the nut. And it's righty tighty. And at this point, I'm going to add a little bit of grease to this as well, like I did for that uh, bearing cover. And hopefully, this is fit right there. Perfect. Uh, you want that flat side, one of the flat sides of the nut facing the holes. That's how you'll get it lined up properly. If that doesn't work, you'll have to rotate it until meaning it's too loose, you have to rotate it until you find a spot that works. Because you do want this that nut snug. You can turn it to make sure it works, we know it will. Now we do some greasing the main gear and putting these pieces back together. First thing I'm going to do is grease this side. And same thing as the pinion gear, just more of a light coat on there.
there's a bottom piece here that I didn't show you guys. Uh, it's right there. It's a little, uh, let's call it the C clip, but it's just a little clip. Uh, I didn't take it off and I still won't take it off. But you can think of it kind of like a, like a spool sleeve for a conventional reel. It's the best way I can kind of describe it. Just helps, it just helps that stay above a certain position on the um, on the bearing. As you can see, I'm greasing everything here. I'm not trying to put too much grease, but I am trying to protect it. And since we're here, we can go ahead and add some grease inside there where that handle will go. All right, light amount of grease on that. You could even put some on this uh, e clip here. And as I said before, this goes in the longer end, it has like a little hook at the end of it, goes inside the main gear, like so. And this end you'll see is not set yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, rest it down and then rotate it to where that spring becomes recessed in that little raised cavity there. Now we're gonna take this piece, you're gonna have those notches facing up, find that hole. Notice that this is not set inside the gap yet. There's a little gap right there. Where's that hole at? And I'll try to do this in one shot. It's not always that easy because I just can't see the, the pin on the spring and I'm trying to show it to you on camera as well. All right, I think I just found the hole there. And we're gonna rotate this. Keep that raised up above the points that you see right there on the uh, main gear because it's not set until it gets inside that channel where the spring can recess into the, can recess into that, the little groove that's inside the main gear. But we just got it. I'm gonna make sure that it's right. I can feel the resistance so I know it's working. And that's exactly how it should look. We're gonna fix that, um, we're gonna fix that spring on the inside because to get this E-clip on there, we're gonna to need to recess that spring. So I'm just gonna kinda of play with it to get it seated. Get it flush inside there. I think we're good with that. And we're gonna start from this side because this is the most clearance I see. Yeah, right there's the most clearance I see. So if there's any raise up on this side over here, that will this e-clip will help push it down into the channel. Now let me use my pliers for this one. This is a pretty big e-clip. And we're gonna double check it again to make sure that it works. And we can see that it does. So we're in business there. Now since we're here, we're gonna grease a few points inside these two pieces for the housing. I'm gonna grease around that post. I'm also gonna grease the tops of the screws there and there, some along that flat part right there. That hole right there for the spring. A light amount inside here where that bearing's gonna sit. I think that is probably it. We can grease the posts if you want as well. You can do the hole in the wall right here, inside there. Uh, and if we miss any spots, as we come back to it, we can certainly add. Same kind of deal on this side, some inside that hole where the bearing sits. Around this where the crosswind block, I'm sorry, the crosswind gear sits. And I'm gonna grease all these holes the ones where the screws go in, plus the ones where the posts will go in. And we can grease that channel where the uh, the bottom drag or rear drag will go. Now let's go ahead and add a light amount of grease to all these pieces that are gonna go inside here.
All right, let's go ahead and do this. Let's assemble all these now. Uh, if you look right here, there's a little post below this big post. This spring, that flat notched end or bent end will be going around it. Looking like that. Now we're gonna take this piece with that notched end facing up. And having this raised bent end fitting around it looking just like that. You can't see it like that, but hopefully you can see it. Now we'll take this piece, drop it over here. Looking like that. Now we can take our spring, add it to this slider right here. This is the uh, pole for the for the ratchet. Hook it through the top. Make sure that the um, the spring is the raised end is is up versus down. We're gonna secure it. I like to keep everything together versus trying to get things in there afterwards. So get that slide over there, secure it with the screw, and you can go all the way down because that spring recesses inside the channel there. These are kind of flopping around a little bit. Now we're gonna take this, I'm gonna hold on to this so it doesn't, this doesn't come out of place. Flick it over there, take your finger and pull, and it sets. It doesn't really go anywhere. Now we can cover it up. putting that over it looking like that and securing it with the screws. The larger screw will be the larger screw will be going over this side right here or the larger head and the smaller one goes in the other hole. And that's how it looks. Now we're going to take this piece that bent end will be going in from the bottom, I like it from the bottom. Those two pieces will be going in like that. Bend it in and now you're looking good. Now all we're gonna do at this point is take this, take that inside the hole. But before we do that, I wanna show you what the process will look like. You're gonna have you're gonna have this inside the hole, engaging with that arm, turning like that to push the paw down. So, for that to happen, I stick that in, and I'm gonna use both hands and rest this on the table. I'm now going to take my finger, push that forward, push down towards the hole that's on the bottom there, as I rotate. Like so. Now we can simply move on to the next step or we could certainly um, add this piece to kind of just get it out of the way and secure it so it doesn't really pop around on you. So I'll add some grease to the bottom side That'll transfer over to this. Hold on to this so you don't get it popping out on you. Find the slot for it and then secure it. And everything is pretty much set at this point. It won't go anywhere. Okay, for the rear drag, we'll, do, we'll grease a few things here. Not too many. I'm not greasing the inside of the channel. I mean, you certainly could. I try to avoid that because that paw is gonna go in there and I don't want any excuse for it to slip. So if you wanted to grease it, great. If you don't want to grease it, don't grease it at all. Residual grease on these pieces right here. And as you can see, I kind of lined it up in the way that it's gonna go back on. Some here. 
I like greasing this spring because water just gets in there and settles and you'll get a, a huge buildup of just crud and salt. Same thing for this. And I grease everything inside here. So the first thing we'll do is take, I'll take this piece and I'll get that put back on there because I'll probably forget it. So now we'll put these together. This is going to go on here, but the way that has to go on is by resting that on the inside like that, dropping this through, rotating this until it goes through the top, and then pulling this over to make sure it's set. I'm referring to the washer, the Teflon washer that we just put on there. And that's set in place. Next we're going to take this metal piece. Notice there's some notches on it. They'll fit in some notches that are right there. You'll see when you look at yours. There's one there and two across there. We can take our washer. I don't know if I said it already earlier, but I don't grease these drag washers. They just don't get enough heat to warrant it, but you certainly could if you wanted to. Take this, pinch it together, stick it inside here, looking just like that. Now we're gonna take it, you'll see there's a couple of holes here. Fit in one of those recesses. If I can find it. But note that this is also keyed. So we're gonna try to get it on there and then rotate it to find one of the recess. And that looks pretty good, I think. Now we can take this, put that over it. That's also keyed. Drag washer, not keyed, if you're keeping score. And then this goes on top of it like that, but we're gonna leave that out for a second because we're gonna start on this side. I'm gonna work this down. It's easier using your fingers to do this than a screwdriver or something. And now I'm just going to work it all the way down until it gets to the bottom, which is pretty far. There we go. Drop the spring in, looking like that. Taking these two little notches here that you see, the raised notches there, one, two. Find the slot that are on that, uh, that screw on the bottom. Fit that in there, looking just like that. And now you kind of just balance this over it. like so. Rotate until it falls in place because it needs to be tight against one another. And we can hear that that works. Now all we're going to do is take it, drop it into the bottom slot, which is this one right here. Push it all the way in. And now you're set. You can feel the tightening and loosening when you turn it. All right, let's go ahead and grease the last few remaining pieces here. You want a decent amount of grease inside that channel right there. And you also want a decent amount of grease around that post right there. While I'm looking at this, I'm going to go ahead and add some grease inside that hole. We're just going to go over the shaft for the live liner. All right, let's prep this by adding some grease to right here where that retainer is going to sit. A little bit on the bottom for the shaft, some on the bottom there, some on the top here where that thrust washer is going to go. Drop it on over it. And now we're going to take our bearing, drop that in, take our crosswind gear, Get that set up kind of like that. Now we can take our block, rest that on there, looking just like this in that situation or that setup. Take our main gear, drop that in here as well. At this point, you no longer want to move that rotor. Take our shaft, put that through there, 
line that up so it goes through looking like that rotate it until it falls into the ratchet like so and we're gonna line that up so this fits over it all I'm gonna do at this point now is just kind of shoot it on there like that and then rotate it down press down secure with the screw and we're pretty much in business uh, there's not much left to do here I want to make sure that that ratchet right there is kind of lined up uh, even though I may not do the reason I'm doing this for that makes sense uh, before we move on we're gonna finish up or add grease to the to the handle some grease around here as well and we can add some oil to right here kind of just work that in I do it at an angle because then it can drip in and drip down Now what we're going to do is take this, line this up and put this through. Let me make sure I get some grease on here again because I may rub some of that off. Before I do, i got to put my bearing on there. All you see me doing here is just putting those shims that came off of it just back on. Now turn this over and just push it straight down. It should just fall into place just like that. Shouldn't be much struggle for that, for that going through lined up properly. Now we can take this, line those two up. Let's get some grease right around here. Then we'll secure this first. I'm going to add some grease to this also. Snug it down. Make sure I snug that down, and now we can lock this up. All right, let's get this brain cover on, handle on, and spool on and test this reel out. right here where that knob is going to go let's test the drag first to make sure that works we already tested the line ruler so we know that works that feels good Test the bottom drag or the rear drag. Let's do this. Let's get it pretty tight. That's fairly tight. It's engaged. I can feel that. Let's loosen it up. That's all the way open. And now we have a nice free live ladder feature. Engaging, disengaging. We see how I can do that so you can see it. Engaging, disengaging. That works. Bail flip. That works. I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else. Yeah, anti reverse. Get the feel. Feels really good. Anti reverse works. Yeah, that's it. All right, guys. If you found the video useful, please hit that thumbs up button. If you appreciate content like this, consider subscribing to the channel and certainly spreading the word about it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.